27th race we can to the BMW IBSF Bob Sayin Skeleton World Cup. We're in Innsbruck in Austria, the double Olympic city once again playing host. This time, for the first time in several years, just one race weekend at the track outside the village of Eagles. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our coverage. First race of the weekend, women's skeleton, Martin Haven and Liz Meyer watching the action with you. And Liz, this track is a, a really good one to bring learners down. It is safe. It's, to quote John Morgan, easy to get down, hard to get down fast. Definitely. It's much of a glider's track, and it's really important here on the start to make sure you get as much speed as possible because there's not much of a decline down this track. There's some small curves. Here's curve one into this big corner two. And athletes are not moving very fast at the top of the track, so these feel like an eternity. Big left-hander here into corner three, and then we're going to go into this top labyrinth. The labyrinth is a combination of some smaller curves into into six year and then into Kreisel, which is corner seven. Kreisel means circle in German, and that's exactly what this is. This is a relatively easy Kreisel in the realms of Kreisel into eight, and then this is corner nine, which historically is a little bit tricky, but this year has so much ice buildup, it's quite the opposite. Into big left-handed corner 10, and then into the bottom labyrinth where we're gonna see the top speeds of these athletes around 120 kilometers an hour, and then into big left-hander corner 14 and across the finish line. And there's an extra corner in the finish curve. This doesn't count towards the time, but it's how the athletes will stop. Uh, at least it's how they'll try to stop. <laughs> Definitely. Tina Herman of Germany is our World Cup points leader. Three wins so far this season. Mimi Reneva in the second position in the standings ahead of Kimberly Boss of the Netherlands. And Mimi was last on the podium here uh, as a bronze medalist four seasons ago now, three seasons ago when, uh, when Liz took the silver. So when was that? 2017-18. So that's uh, definitely a, a, about eight races ago yes. in, in four <laughs> years. So we've done a lot of double duty here in Innsbruck because the track is always uh, available and works for everybody. And uh, during COVID times, particularly uh, yeah, getting a lot of races in here. So athletes preparing their sleds at the top. They'll have made their runner choices overnight or yesterday after uh, training the previous two days and have looked at the weather conditions and kind of guessed what's going to be best and to a degree you are sort of having a bit of a stab in the dark aren't you a little bit i mean it's been really cold this week in training and it's staying cold today as well it's minus eight here in in eagles and that's really chilly for here it does feel like it actually i was driving up from uh, the airport in Munich and I can't remember ever having come here where there's no snow anywhere apart from when you get up into the mountains so it's still been a relatively mild winter well we've got 19 sleds in our starting order Liu Qi of China will be first off Kim Marmons rounds out our first heat Race 7 of the BMW IBSF Women's Skeleton World Cup in Innsbruck in Austria. Martin Haven and Liz Meyer watching Li Yu Qi of China get us underway. Eighth World Cup start for this young Chinese slider, just 24 years old. Has only been on this track a couple of times. Nice entry there into corner one. She's about 3,500s off that start record. We're going to see if anyone gets close to it today. Well, the start record and uh, from, where is it, 2016? Elena Nikitina, so that would have been in the World Championships in uh, January 2016. Uh, but Nikitina with astonishing record on this track. The Russian slider won no fewer than six times, largely because she's so far ahead by the time he gets to the prize on nobody ever caught her. This is very much a glider's track, so you're wanting to see as little movement as possible by these athletes. Her sled's nice and straight, 102 kilometers as she heads into corner 10. 121.8 is a good top speed. I'm curious to see exactly how quick we're going to see some athletes today. Well, track there record. you go. <laughs> okay. You were saying that the track record has already been broken a couple of times well, in training. Whoa. No way, Bo. Yeah, finish curve is not anywhere where the athletes are stopping when they're doing what the speed they're doing at the bottom. 121 kilometers an hour, 75.7 miles an hour. That's not a corner you want to be using any kind of stopping technique. So it's into the crash mats. <laughs> the bobsleds will brief, briefly break after the finish line. Skeleton not. Bit of a flop there. She comes off corner 10 into that bottom labyrinth. And you're going to just see 
nice parallel entry as she enters in. A little bit of toe steering, but not much at all. Well, that pretty smooth looking run from Lee Yu Shi <laughs> pops out her cheeks a bit as Patrick Shannon brings in the sled. Now, hometown queen is Janine Flock, her 101st World Cup start. Her first World Cup here was in 2011 when you were how old? There you 17, go. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> This is her 16th World Cup. On this track alone, she's got two gold, three silver, and four bronze medals. On this track alone. So two-time winner, Janine Flock. She's not going to beat the start record of 5.11, but the track record is definitely in danger now. Definitely. Janine has come back from having back surgery at the start of this season. So she missed the first three World Cups in North America. And she's really just trying to build on the next quad, aiming for that 2026 Olympics in Austria's backyard, basically, in Italy. Yeah. And basically, if you're going to have a season off, the one immediately post-Olympics is, is the time to be giving away races. Best speed so far. Still a tenth behind. She was 900s behind at the start. Little late exit. Nice looking into corner nine. Let's see if she sticks it here. A little bit of a skitter. She heads into that uphill section two kilometers faster, though, than that Chinese athlete wow. as she enters into corner 10. Big speed from Janine Flock. She's in the lead. She has gone loose and fast on the setup, for her at least, and across the line, 53-26. That's a great looking run by Janine. I mean, some little errors to clean up. Her deficit is definitely from that start. And that goes back to the injury that she's been recovering from. She said she's nowhere near how she was before. And uh, two pushes, she's kind of OK. The third push, she's really starting to feel it. Definitely. Really early as she enters into corner eight as she comes off of Kreisel. So she beats her own track record, which has existed since the 18th of December 2020. It is now the whatever of January 2023, 10th of February, February already. Next up, Alessandra Fumagalli of Italy, 24 years old, only her fifth ever World Cup start. She's been an occasional performer over the last couple of seasons, has not raced here in the World Cup, only in Europe Cup and Intercontinental Cup. So she was here in 2020 and 2021. And the Italians keeping their three top sliders, her and Alessia Cripper and Valentina Margaglio. There's Margaglio at the top with all the hair, keeping them busy. Lee Schneider now coaching the Italians, bringing his knowledge, his technology, his sled. Ooh, nearly went clear off the sled. Yeah. Still 5.39. She's super lucky that her hand ended up where it did. Athletes run with one hand holding the sled, swap it over to two hands and load on. But a little slip like that can really impact that start time. I always see that and I think, you know, if you just, if you sort of half catch the saddle with your thumb or something, mm -hmm. really sprain it or really twist your wrist, that must be the nightmare when you're trying to focus on the track. Yeah, it's definitely not the greatest feeling. With that top start that she had, she has a third best speed, so she's just bleeding time as she heads down the track. Little tap there. So she's gone from four tenths to four hundredths. Oh, big skip. Whoa. She's in that uphill section. Third best speed for Alessandra Fumigali. You can really see how far your start pushes you down the track. She was quarter ten before she lost her deficit. And across the line, 53-69. So the first slider not to get a new track record. Wow. And as ever, the uh, ungainly dismount. dismount. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We do not have brakes on our skeleton floods. We use our toes, we air brake. And That's then... knocked the wind out of her as well, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah, wow. the mattresses is what ultimately brings you to a stop. Yeah, this 10 meters at the end is the most dangerous 10 meters in all of ice sliding. Oh, she just misses wow. the saddle as she loads under the sled. The saddle is where it kind of like cushions us and holds us in on the sled and as she jumps on she holds on to the bumper to quickly get her hands tucked under her aerodynamic position that's gonna hurt as she heads in this uphill section just weightless and puts her to quite a big skid just too much pressure as she heads out of corner nine Alessandra Fumigali done and down for the first of her two heats next up is Anna Fernstedt for the Czech Republic 26 years old uh, best two races here, 8th and 9th in December 2020. Those are the only finishes in single digits on this track. 
she was training here at the start of the season with that Austrian team. Historically, Anna is not the quickest on the start. She knows this, but she is a phenomenal driver. She came from the German program in Koenigsee and has really grown into an amazing pilot. Yeah, classic German slider where it's all about where you are at the finish line rather than at the start line. And we'll see that again with her team, well, former teammate Tina Herman. Definitely, she's a glider. She's getting closer with that speed, even with that deficit that she had on the start. Nice tidy exits as well, coming straight down the tubes. Stop the bleeding from her start. She's now starting to gain on the positions ahead of her. Second highest speed, nice big looping corner. Good speed. So the old track record, 53.47. She is not inside that. She lost speed at the bottom, 53.82. Thought she was going to be ahead of Alessandra Fumagalli. It did look like she stopped the bleeding a little bit from her start deficit, but around middle of the track, she just, yeah, it lost it a little bit. Here she is onto the start, just loading onto the sled. She's going to tuck those hands underneath her legs, those little handles that we can hold on to. Nice, good aerodynamic position, head slow into this little bit of an uphill section. You can see her head tilting a little bit to the slider's left. That's how she's controlling her sled in that moment. Coached by Jeff Payne, but a, a small operation that the team from the Czech Republic. Next up, Olympic champion Hannah Neiser, just 22 years old. And Hannah, already an Olympic champion before she won a World Cup race. This is only her 20th World Cup start, so still very much on the ascendancy. And eighth place on her debut here in Innsbruck in February 2020 is still her best result on this track. So let's see if she can find a little bit more again. Don't expect the start record to go down. Definitely not the strongest on the starts in this German team. But she is Olympic champion, and she knows how to drive a sled phenomenally well. Interesting that the German selection criteria basically centers around how quick you start, yet they get no funding at all for starts and mm -hmm. only for wins. And so you get the likes of Jacqueline Lerling not making the team because she doesn't run fast enough, despite the fact she wins loads of gold medals. Definitely. It should be what you do at the bottom of the track. Yeah. I mean, she's only 1800s behind Janine at this time. Second best speed, really nice exit out of Kreisel there. Best, I think we've seen so far. Gap's coming, mm, not coming down. Ooh, good speed though. Still good speed, was two tenths back at the last split, still two tenths back. She's not catching Janine Flock, she's not losing too much down the run. But across the line, 2100s back, 53.47, which ties the old start record. It really shows how good that Chinese athlete's run was. It's hard when yeah. they're the first off the track, we're like, okay, it was good, but how good was it? It's kind of hard to tell until we see some more of these veteran yeah. athletes come down. 200s quicker than Hannah Neiser. Both of them with about the same experience of this track. Going to see her come off of Chrysler here. She uses her toe to steer and get off the corner, but this gives her, oh, a little bit of a skid, but a really nice straightaway as she heads into corner eight. Going to see her... Just, there's a little bit of bumpiness happening on the track, puts her into a bit of a skid, but she brings it back quite nicely. A little early to 10 if I'm being picky. Ice is fast and flowing, and Janine Flock leads the first heat of race seven of the Women's Skeleton World Cup. Kimberly Boss of the Netherlands makes her 50th Women's Skeleton World Cup start. She's 29 years of age, three gold medals in her career so far, all earned in Winterberg. First race here in the World Cup was in 2017, and in the last five races on this track, she's had four silvers and a bronze, and she's just made it around. I thought she was gonna go straight into the wall at the bottom of that men's lose start, but that was a horrendous start for Kimberly Boss. Oh, bugger. And that happens, so the athlete gets to choose which groove they would like to push on. We're gonna see a replay of it afterwards, but as she loaded onto the sled, she just popped the groove. And it makes this part really difficult because there's a balance point on the sled. And if you're not perfectly on it, it's really hard to control your sled. I compare it to like driving with your knees. It's doable, but not fast, not the safest either. 
Well, nominally a 5.38 start, which is the fastest so far, but she lost so much speed from all of that skidding and wrestling on the sled. Third best down here at the bottom, only 1,700s back. This is a heck of a drive from Kimberly Boss. This is a really big drive from Kimberly Boss. 53.48, considering she popped the groove at the top and basically barely made it out of, yeah. out of the outrun. To be 100th mm. behind Hannah Neiser, that is what you call a recovery. There's Mike Rogel's her boyfriend. She's still in fighting position. I mean, this yeah. shows her as an athlete. Okay. <laughs> It didn't quite go to fly, and you're going to see just as she loads on, it pops out of the groove, the runners or those circular tube things on the yeah. bottom of the track. She's getting her hands quickly underneath, just misses that luge entry, and gets ready for corner one. Then settles onto her sled. That really shows her experience as an athlete to be able to... Oh, yeah. The Oscar the coach, oh, yeah. We, have, we felt that. Uh, she is taped up all over the place, but still smiling. Tina Herman next up, our points leader. 71st World Cup start. Apart from Janine Flock, the most experienced slider in the field. She's our European gold medalist with 16 wins in her skeleton career. 12th World Cup race here since she made her debut in Innsbruck in February 2015. She's had just one win in all that time. And that is going back a while. When did she last? Oh, two wins here, 2016-17. Uh, well, once was in the World Championships 2016. So that's not a bad way to win. Definitely one of the most experienced sliders. She's again in that German bubble where they're not the quickest on the start, but great technology, great driving ability. And she is certainly a perfectionist on the sled. We're gonna see her head bobble left and right, just trying to get that perfect line. Wearing the yellow jersey of our World Cup points leader. Three wins already in Lake Placid and both races in Altenburg fell to Tina Herman. Top speed as she heads into Kreisel. Okay. Look out, track record, here we go. She's bringing the deficit back a little to Janine Flock. That's very nice of a brother, a little bit slower than Janine, just by a hip whisker. Oh, and a couple of toe steers creeping in here, speed's dropping away, still 1,300s back. This is second place right now for Tina Herman. And across the line, 1,600s back, that is second place. It is inside the old track record, but not enough to beat Janine on the first heat. Oops, a little bit of mistakes there at the bottom of the track. Like I said, she is a perfectionist on the sled, so she's looking for trying to get perfect lines. See Here the she... runners sticking to the yeah. mats there at the bottom. Here she goes, loading onto her sled, wants to get her head as low as possible, get on as quick as possible, get a nice aerodynamic position. As she heads out of corner nine here, we're gonna see her head bobble a little bit left and right. See those toes behind her, we also steer with our toes, as well as body movement and flexing the sled with our shoulders and our knees. Such subtle, <laughs> tiny little movements <laughs> just to stop that skid breaking out. <laughs> yeah, shame. So next up for Great Britain, the first of two British sliders in a row. This is Laura Dees, 34-year-old, 66th World Cup race, and her 10th here, her best, a fifth place finish in January 2019. Good. So skipped the last race in Altenburg to be ready for the World Championships in Samaritz. And like her teammate Brogan Crowley on new kit this season, supplied by Austria's Matthias Guggenberger and Martin Stukors, who you just saw at the start. 5.34 getaway. We've talked a lot about this British program this year, and the new coaching staff, the new equipment has really breathed new life into this program. It's really great to see them now competing for medals again where we expect them to be. Yeah, because 12 months ago, 18 months ago, sliders like Laura were starting fastest of all or in the top two or three and still barely making it into the top 20. 1600s is her advantage, long skid. That's where we see that speed has gone to into that big skid. Oh, a little bit later, she enters into corner 11. That's a wild bottom labyrinth. Still trying to learn this new sled. Takes much less steering than the ones they're used to. So 2800s back. Well, there is Matthias. Shakes his head, doing too much on the sled. 53-5-4, sixth place finish. And again, the uncomfortable dismount. 
You basically hit yeah. the crash mats and you end up wherever they throw you. There is no safe way to get the sled stopped here. Definitely. And I mean, these athletes are going faster than they've ever gone before. Almost yeah. everyone is within that track record. It's hard to stop the sled, especially on this track. Here she comes out of corner nine. You're going to see that her head go into the right a little bit, which I think maybe puts her in a little bit of a skid. And you can see the ice actually coming off the runners, which really shows how much ice is being cut there. Bottom labyrinth was wild. A little bit of a flop there puts her in a little bit of a flop of the next one. Once you get off your line in this bottom labyrinth, hard to bring it back. Yeah. If the timing's a fraction out, you hit oh, everything in sight. Laura yeah. D's then in sixth position. And next up is Brogan Crowley, 20th World Cup start for Brogan Crowley, 28 years of age. It's her sixth World Cup here alone, and she has a top five finish from January 2021. Martin Sukors helping with the driving, 5.37, so another strong start. She's a very strong starter. She's had many surgeries and has had a little bit of problems with her back this season as well. So although it's quick, it's not as quick as she normally is. Well, it's been ankles and feet up yep. to now. She had uh, surgery on both little toes during the summer. So just moving the, as ever, you, you fix one problem, you move it to somewhere else. Definitely a little bit back on speed there, still in fighting position. Third best speed, gone from three tenths ahead of Janine Flock to two tenths, and this should be down into single digits here. Seventh best speed should be in the red at the next clock. Now, how far back will she? Oh, she's still in the green. But she doesn't have the speed like we've seen those previous athletes before her. But this track is so short across the line in second place. <laughs> There you go. This track is short. I mean, especially when you come here from Samaritz, where they're doing 70 plus seconds yes. coming down here. It's 53. I mean, you only get two thirds as much time on the ice for your push. Definitely. It's a very short track to be sliding on. The push is so integral and it's the miniature steering here. You're not, you don't want to steer a ton. Loads on her sled. Knee first, trying to get all the momentum going forward. Again, tucks those hands nice under her legs. Then we're going to see this just a little bit too much pressure, and she's going to get bumped on that slider's right. There's a bit of ice kicking out, and she goes into a skid as she enters into corner 10. Skids both ways, a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. All right, nine sliders down in our field of 19. Here is our 10th starter, the USA's Kelly Curtis, 33 years of age. Only raced here once in November 2021, or one pair of weekends here so relatively inexperienced her best world cup result in europe was samaritz last february she had a top six finish her best result here a ninth place not the quickest on the start either but she got the fifth fastest start so far of the heat She's stationed at Natalie, so she's actually not too far away from here at all. Her husband and her live there while she is part of the military program in the States. 1,200s ahead of Janine Flock, as she was at the start. So she's maintaining her position, but only the eighth best speed, losing ground to our current leader. And a big skid there as she exits out of Kreisel. Well, only a couple of race weekends on this track, so still trying to build her knowledge. Of course, Janine has been coming here for, well, the better part of two decades now. Coming a bit on that speed there, but this is a bit of a messy bottom labyrinth. And across the line, 53-48. Top six run, though. Tied with King Boss. Yeah. On this track, because it is so short and quite a gliders track. We're going to see lots of ties, lots of really tight battles, which will make a really interesting second heat. We're going to see a lot of movement in these sleds. As she comes off of corner three here, just a little bit too much extra pressure. I'm going to take that bump and then off of Kreisel here into a big skid before she heads into corners eight. Lots of height there as she heads into corner eight. So you heard the coach Tuffy Latour saying six 2200s back. That's a good way to start. So Janine Flock with a new track record ahead of Brogan Crowley and Tina Herman. Ten down, nine to go. 
first heat of women's skeleton world cup in innsbruck in austria in our first run we currently have janine flock in the lead and mimi reneva at the block 46 world cup start for mimi her seventh here a bronze medal is her best result behind my co-commentator liz meyer who took a silver back in 2017 last canadian medals on this track are we going to see some today I was talking a little bit with, oh, a bit of a bump there, actually, as she enters into corner two. I was talking with Mimi a little bit this year, and she said she's really just enjoying sliding, which is fun is fast, and I think really seen that this year in her season. And it's, I mean, that's like every sport. If you're not having fun, you're just not doing well, and you don't do well, mm -hmm. It, you know, and then you don't have fun and it just is a, a vicious spiral. Nice looking run so far though from Mimi, holding her advantage. Losing just a hundredth now here to Janine Flock. She's got oh, a little bit of a bump there on the sliders left. But no skids, so she maintains some of that speed. Whoa! It's Late in the labyrinth. A little bit wild here at the bottom of the track for Mimi. To say some. And across the line. Oh, four hundreds bad. Okay, she was coming down into that labyrinth as quick as she's ever done in her career. And, uh, yeah, that come, it comes at you pretty fast. Definitely. Athletes are moving at 120 kilometers an hour there, so or over that now. Yeah. Here she is coming off of corner nine. Just ends up taking that bump. We haven't seen any athletes take that yet. Not really into a skid, keeps the runners pretty straight. But as she comes off of 10 here, just a little bit too early on that slider's left, as she enters an 11, it'll push all the height to the end of the corner, which makes for that really messy bottom labyrinth. She knows what happened. She'll be looking to fix up. Some things to clean up for run two. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. <laughs> all right, well, she's had the silver and a bronze. She is in the silver medal position, as behind her comes her teammate, Jane Channel. So Jane, in the last two races here, we had double races last year, had a fifth and a twelfth, Mimi had a fourteenth and an eleventh. So Jane, best result here is, uh, is that fifth place finish from last season. Start should be strong, mm -hmm. and it is 5.31. Fastest of the heat so far. She's had injuries over the past couple of seasons, but finally is really back into that form that we're used to seeing from her from ages ago. And Jane, of course, has a big fan club in Vancouver, has a big fan club here as well. Mm-hmm, definitely. Predominantly made up of track sweepers' brooms. Yeah, Jane has a bit of a mixed relationship <laughs> with this track, that's for sure. To say the least. Yeah, uh, look for a broom video. Oh, oh the big tap on her left side. She did hit a broom here one season. Uh, yeah. Yep, that was a, a track worker stepping out, didn't quite get his broom out of the way, and uh, she clouted it on the way down. 2400s up to 1400s back, that speed's gone away. Just doesn't have the speed like we've seen those other athletes. And that one big hit on the wall, I mean, that wasn't a tap, that was a really solid hit. Mystique Rowe videoing. 53.70. Mystique was uh, at the new track in Blue Dents in Austria last week. Definitely going to have some areas to clean up for that second heat. Mm. But really, anything can happen on this track. They're still fighting distance for that top six position even here as well. Bit of a tap there as she enters into Kreisel. Puts her off angle into Kreisel, which makes those pressures just a little bit off where they would normally be, probably not prepared for it. And then takes that tap as she exits as well on the left side. Big air tap. Yeah. <laughs> See, when you call that a tap, yeah. I call that a very solid hit. From Jane Channel to Suzanne Crayer, our world champion, 23 years of age, only her ninth World Cup start. She made her World Cup debut here in January 2020. Also won Junior World Championship gold here last January. So she has good memories of her last visit to the Innsbruck track. Quickest of the German starters, definitely. Mm. A 
And she showed in Samaritz that she's got the ability and the mentality mm -hmm. to survive on her own, basically, with, with no teammates close to her at the top of the field in a four-heat world championship race under all that pressure. On a track she's not hugely intimate with, so I think this young woman's got an awfully big future ahead of her. Definitely. She is one of those young athletes, but she's so experienced being within this German program. Holding on to her lead. This is about the longest we've seen tenure of the lead. Only the six best speed. This might be enough for Suzanne Kreia. Going to be very close, but there's very little ice left. Just drops behind Janine. Second at the line, third at the line, fourth at the line. Top four covered by 1500s. We are starting to see this shaping up into a classic Innsbruck race. Definitely a classic Innsbruck race. I like to point out she's sponsored also by Bob Team Friedrich, the pilot for the German bobsledders as well, supporting that Saxony athlete. She is from Altenburg. Much different track than Altenburg, that's for sure. Top nine sleds cover by 22 hundredths of a second. It's going to be a very close second heat. Just edging away from that slider's left wall. She heads into corner eight. Nice aerodynamic position. And then off of nine here, you can see her elbows just peeking out a little bit. Her shoulders are a bit off the sled. Just needs to kind of settle down for that next heat. Big smile from Suzanne Kreia. As we get to the youngest athlete in the field, this is the USA's Hallie Clark. So only her sixth World Cup race. She already has one silver in her locker. She raced here in the Intercontinental Cup, which is the second tier of sliding in December 2021. Took a third place finish. That's her only trip to the track, though. 5.38, another very quick starter. Definitely. This athlete is hugely talented. She's quick on the start. She's got a good driving feeling, and she's got great equipment as well. It's really a triple threat with her. And she's got time on her yes. side. She's only 18, mm -hmm. and she's already a fully-fledged World Cup slider. So, I mean, this kid has got so much potential. Definitely. And she has so much room for improvement, too. With that age, she can have a really long career ahead of her, should she choose. And the physical speed will continue to develop as well as that ability on the sled. Fifth best speed, 2,600 still ahead of Janine Flock. This might still be enough speed to carry her to the line as our new race leader. She's wrestling the sled all the way. It is the lead for Hallie Clark. Who's <laughs> yelling down at the bottom. <laughs> New track record for the 18-year-old. Track record. Second ever time on this track. Awesome. Good that job. was a nice looking run. I mean, a little bit of problem that bottom labyrinth there, eh? Big smiles. I'd have a big smile too. Listen, she's carrying so much speed, the labyrinth can yeah. do what it likes. She's still got it in the bank. Yeah, a little bit floppy, I would say. You can see the sled flop off the corner, but she's just letting it fly, and sometimes that's just what the sled needs. That's a real Katie Ulender slide, yes. isn't it? Yeah. Really is. Let her buck. Yeah. Let it fly. Okay. New, new, new track record. Yeah. Next up, Nicole Silveira of Brazil. Only here in December 2020 for a pair of World Cup races. So only the second time on this track in her career. She was 18th in both those. Let's see what she has done because this year she has sort of progressed from the 15 to 18 to the 6 to 10 groupings. Let's see how close she can get to our lead. Yelled off by coach Joe Cicchini. All the, all the coaches in those green snipers jackets coming from the, the group in Calgary, 5.52. Yeah, there's a bit of a coaching collaboration that's going on to really bring the development program up. I mean, we see it with Nicole. She's a fantastic athlete slider. Kind of came from that snipers program. Yeah. Well, like Joe comes from Calgary. He's a, a Calgary cop. She's a nurse in mm -hmm. the health service in Calgary. Started sliding in Calgary and now home track B Whistler. Yeah. Nice looking exit there. She enters out of Chrysler. She is holding the margin right on the fringes of the top 10. A little skinny there. Ninth best speed. Oh, a big hit as she enters. Oh! Ah, oh, there you are. That's what the lower labyrinth is yeah. like here when you're a, a smidge off with your yep. timing. 
53-7-1. And that is 14th place out of our 15 sliders so far. Just 100 behind Jane Chanel. Like, this is a really yeah. tight race. We're going to see a lot of movement, like I mentioned, in this second. 100 heat. behind yeah. Jane, 200 behind Alessandra Fumagalli. Yeah. She's going to know where she needs to clean up. Here she comes out of corner 10. She just ends up bumping that slider's left-hand side, and it, it was a pretty decent bump, which puts all the height into the exit of uh, corner 11. Really flying her, and it's really hard to get back on. See, so all the drama's yeah. there, yeah. but it actually started on the straight down to yes. 10 off corner 9, where she didn't get on to 10. Mm -hmm. And then if you don't get on to 10, you don't get on to 11, 12, 13. Yes, it just it's exaggerates. It's as simple as that. Yep. Yep. Hallie Clark is our leader from hometown Queen Janine Fock as we get to our final sliders. This is the 10th World Cup start in the career of young Chinese athlete Xiao Dan. 20 years old. She made her World Cup debut here in December 2021. She was 19th and 15th in the two races in the fortnight that we were here at the end of the 21 winter or into 22. Nice aerodynamic position by these athletes. 5.42 getaway, a tenth quicker than we've just seen from Nicole Silvera. Just saw her toe tap in a little bit as she exited corner two. Skeleton athletes steer with their head, shoulders, knees, and toes. There's been a big change in the Chinese program. Really, Snyder, who's been their coach for the last four years, has moved on, and Dirk Matchins has come in. And, oh, our best heat. And he is having some good results with these young athletes. Her development coach, Mark Wood, reckoned that uh, Chow Dan was probably the best prospect that China had. And she's looking like it right she now. Is, she just looks like she's a much more experienced slider. She's got that calm on the sled. What? A little bit rough there at the bottom labyrinth, but like you said, these athletes are hitting it faster than ever before. Whoa! Second hey. best run, 700s back. There you go. That was a good looking run by her. Best ever World Cup race result, an eighth place in December in Altenburg, <laughs> in, uh, where was that, Park City, and a 15th place here is her best, but big smiles on her face. Here she comes off of corner nine. Nice low head position, little bit of a skid, but she doesn't panic. She keeps in a nice form, which ends up preventing the skid from really affecting her. Now this is the bottom labyrinth. Gets that floppy feeling. I mean, it's like we saw with Hallie. She had a quick run, but it was a little bit messy yeah. in this labyrinth just going to need to control it, take control of the sled down there. So little Dan is in second place, 100 ahead of Janine Flock, 700s off the leader. Final three sleds, Kendall Wessenberg for the USA, 51st at World Cup start for Kendall. Wasn't here last season, but it is her sixth World Cup race here. Her best was an eighth place in December 2017. Other than that, she's been in the teens. Great video on her social media earlier in the week of uh, sending her wife down on a sled, pushed off the loo start, which comes in just on the sliders left here in a bit of a snowstorm. And if you want to know what it looks like first time ever down the track with no knowledge, mm -hmm. you've got a very good idea. Definitely. It's great to see those people that have never slid before because sometimes when you watch this, you can be like, oh, how hard is it? It's actually quite tricky to make the runs look clean and yep. clear. A lot of finessing, a lot of experience necessary. Yeah, otherwise you just hit everything mm -hmm. in sight. Yeah. Spend the whole time going down yelling, ow. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've done that as a professional athlete as well, but that's a different story. Anyways, Kendall's having a pretty yeah. nice looking run here. She's got some new equipment this year. Struggling as well with a back injury. She's waiting for back surgery. Eighth best speed, but skidding it away. So this is not going to be uh, a top eight result. This is going to be the second half of the lead table, 53-7-9. couple little areas for her to clean up but honestly it comes a lot down to her start deficit struggling with that injury she needs a fusion in her back so it yeah. is a pretty heavy one that needs to be happening yeah she needs time to recover mm -hmm. from that as well and you can't do that in the season nope and coming off of Chrysler here a little bit of a skid towards that sliders left side gonna take that bump just bumps her a little bit off and then as she heads into corner eight, just a little bit too much of the sliders right than you would prefer. Hey, Thanks for watching.
Got some nice weather. Yeah, minus eight, but sunny. Valentina Margaglio, loving this year's new helmet. Let's see what she can produce. 29 years of age, 28th World Cup start. Hard to imagine that. Last time we were here, she was fifth in the first week, bronze medal in the second. And she led after that first heat as well. So she has potential here to really light it up. Well, she has never been out of the top 10 in seven previous World Cup starts. That's condemning her now to coming in last backwards for some reason. I'm <laughs> sorry. Oh, a bit of a... Oh. All, right, all right, best start. That's what we expect from this young athlete. She's a pocket rocket on the start, that's for sure. Yeah, she's astonishing, and the Italian team need to keep her. I'm sure there'll be people looking at her for a potential sprinting career after this, but... Definitely, she is so talented, and she's starting to learn the driving as well. This takes time. It's not something that happens overnight. And, you know, new coach, new mm -hmm. kit as well with Willy Schneider, and he's just going to be continuing to develop the athletes and the technology as they run up to Milano Cortina, 26. Dropping behind a fraction. 17th best speed. This is. I'm not sure I'm trusting yeah. those speed readouts. She know. is two tenths back, but she can't be the slowest slider in the field. She may, may well, 4, have 4200s been. back, yeah. maybe, okay, maybe so. Maybe a poor setup selection. I mean, she had some sm small mistakes, but she was so quick on the start there. I'm, I'm Too much control. Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised to see her that far back. So athletes can choose the runners, which are on the bottom of the sled, and that's where the control yeah. will come from. The, the face yeah, there tells you everything. I, I, exactly. What the hell happened there? Li I mean, this is a little bit of a bump that she takes, taking some of the speed away from her start, yeah. but really not enough to take a tenth away or something like this. Then as she heads into this uphill section, she's going to take that bump on the left side, but it doesn't, yeah, a little bit of a skid. I don't know. Mm. We've seen much worse Yeah, runs. definitely. Absolutely at a loss to explain what's gone on wrong. Mm -hmm. And we get to our 19th and final slider in this heat. Kim Marmons, 53rd World Cup start for her. And broke her both, damaged both ankles mm -hmm. pre-season in Whistler. And so it's still... Actually, it's quite painful to watch her walk around, to be honest. Only the second World Cup start of the season, but her ninth time here. She took the first ever World Cup medal for Belgium in skeleton last season. But following the eighth best start, I mean, for having two broken ankles earlier this I, I season. Know, I know, I know. Well done. Her recovery has just been fantastic, and uh, six best speed. And to put it into perspective as well, not only did she break both ankles, she's also switched up kit completely. So she's on a new sled, a new Bromley sled built by Richard. Hi to Stacey and happy birthday to Thomas back home <laughs> cheering on Kim Mailman's today. But honestly, it really shows how good of an athlete she is. She started in that German program. Yeah. Really a fantastic pilot. Eighth of the splits. Only the 13th best speed, so she's slipping down towards the tail end of the top 10. But if she can be within two tenths, here at the line, how close is she? 1900s back, fifth at the bottom. There is Richard Bromley on the left, and Famos from Anna Mirembel on the right. 53-37, so eighth best start and fifth at the line. 1900s off the lead, tied with Brogan Crowley in fighting distance as well because she's yeah. made some couple mistakes here a little bit messy as she comes off her cries all gonna take that tap gonna take a skid and then over here into the brow i mean we've seen so many people in putting themselves into skids here it's a bit tricky takes the bump on the left side as she heads into 10. she doesn't set up the bottom labyrinth great either and then again look that that's not her limping because of the dismount in the tunnel the elbow is probably from the outrun yeah Unfortunately. absolutely is it is a very dangerous end to any run Unbelievably, our race leader is the youngest athlete in the field, someone who has only been on this track once before in their career. Hallie Clark, like a comet, sorry, <laughs> leading the field by the massive margin of seven hundredths of a second from Shaldan. So we've got an 18-year-old leader, 20-year-old in second place, and the most experienced slider in the field, Janine Flock, in third spot, covered by 800s. 
400s back out of the medals, Mimi Reneva, and then look at that. 1900s back, Kim Marmon's broken Crowley, 2300s back, Suzanne Crea, Tina Herman. I mean, it's just an enormous dogfight right from top to bottom. 11th place tied, 310s back, 600s back to 13th, 600s back to 14th. I mean, it's just insanely tight. Definitely. It's going to be an exciting second heat. We're going to see a lot of leapfrogging, a lot of movement, some cleaning up from people like Kim Boss, who had a bit of a shocker. So. The biggest gaps in the field are smaller than the blink of a human eye. Join us for the second and deciding heat when we come back at a time that I've forgotten to write down, which will very likely be uh, 1,300 local time, so in about 44 minutes from now. We'll be more organised then, I promise.